Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I want to talk a little bit about Linus Tech Tips and some of the problems they've been having, but I'm not here to add to the drama. It's more of, for me, it's more of implications for how it affects my channel and what I need to do to make sure that I don't repeat the mistakes of others. Maybe you know, maybe you don't, but Linus Tech Tips has been called out by a number of YouTubers for making mistakes with their lab uh, evaluations of graphics cards and systems and processors. Uh, they have found errors in them. They let, used old data. They didn't configure it right, blah, 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 blah. So today, about an hour ago, Linus Tech Tips got put together a video that they released, and it's, it's basically saying, hey, we're going to deal with this. And they went through a number of, uh, they started with the new CEO, and he was talking about, hey, we know we have a problem. We know we're owning up to it, and we got to deal with it. And then they, they kind of went through all of the uh, people that are affected or in the, in the loop uh, of change holders that can actually affect and make changes that will help improve their processes. So they, they've, there's, I think they're trying to, you know, first of all, you always have to identify a root cause. The worst thing you can do in, when you're having issues like this is start this, right? It's your fault. No, it's your fault. You don't want to do that. That's the blame game, and all that does is destroy your team. Well, instead, what you want to do is bring your team together and and hammer out a solution to prevent it from happening again. Uh, that's the that should be your end goal. We all make mistakes, and they'll make mistakes, and I'll make mistakes. It doesn't matter how good your process is. That's an ever evolving thing. Now, Linus doesn't need me to tell him that his channel's successful. He already knows that. I'm a, I'm a little guy. I'm not even I'm not even on their radar. So yeah, I mean, and that's fine. I mean, <laughs> I never thought this channel would get this large to begin with. So uh, the reason I created this channel and I still hold by it is is to give something back to the community that has given me so much. So I'm taking my experience and I'm trying to help you in your career and in, and in your hobby uh, to do things better and hopefully a lot less frustration on your part so you enjoy it more. Uh, nobody, nobody likes to go through the, the school of hard knocks the hard way. Uh, it's better to listen to somebody else's uh, blood, sweat, and tears and avoid what they did. <laughs> So yeah, avoid what I did uh, because we were pioneers, and yeah, and and that, yeah, that's never a good thing to be the first one out um, with something new because uh, the chances of it failing on you are pretty high. Plus, you don't know what you're doing, uh, and I don't care what anybody says. I mean, it, it, the funny thing here's a, here's a, a life story for you. So, so in the in the early days when we were doing things, we didn't know it couldn't be done. We just tried it, and if it worked great, and if it failed, well, okay, we'll move, we'll try something else. But a lot of times, the managers they somewhere around in the '80s they started asking for estimates. How long is this going to take? I have no idea. I've never done it before. Well, give me your best guess. Oh, you want me to just pull a number out of the air? Okay, two years. And they, oh no, that's unreasonable. And it's like, well, why don't you just set the date and then tell me what I have to meet? How much time are you willing to give me? That was a mistake. Don't ever do that. Don't, don't, don't ever do that. Don't let your managers dictate what your timing is. Because I think that was a lot of Linus's Tech Tips problems is they, they had a set schedule where they had to produce videos in this uh, kind of... Uh, you know, in a very short amount of time to be able to generate the video, get it out, get it published, and get it on the on the on the system. <clears throat> if you notice that what I do is I'm always behind. You know, I'm probably a week or two behind because I take my time. I, I'm not in a hurry. I mean, I don't need to be first. <laughs> I don't need to be out in the middle, uh, out of the fr front of the pack, and explain to you, oh, this is. This is how this DE works, and this is the packages that you'll see. No, I, I don't need to be first with all that. I take my time with the benchmarks because I don't want to be pushed up against a deadline like that. Because you're just going to make mistakes. You're just you're going to be in a hurry. You're going to take shortcuts, and then you're going to pay for it. Linus Tech Tips got on 
And they said, hey, we're going to stop our production schedule until we get this thing worked out. They, they actually think the problem, and it is, uh, the problem is that serious that they need to stop, take stock, fix it, and so that it doesn't happen again. Now, it, it's probably still going to happen, but it won't happen in the way that they have stopped it from happening. It'll be something new. And so that's the pro, that's the ever-evolving uh, processes that you keep stepwise refinement to your processes to address issues as they come up. And hopefully the, the issues which are this big become that big. <laughs> so, yeah, you're dealing with less and less important things uh, that you can do, that you have the time to do, and are not something that's going to hang you out to dry. So um, what about this channel? What am I, what am I going to do? Well, I have been trying to do a couple of things. One, I use Pharonix for all my benchmarking, and I have a reason for that. Uh, the main reason is so that I can publish the results to the openbenchmarking.org website, and you can see what I did. I'm trying to be transparent. I'm not trying to hide anything from you. I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. I have I have no ax to grind. I could care less if Ubuntu is faster than Fedora or Fedora is faster than Ubuntu. I don't care. What I care about is what what is ground truth. So many times today, I think we're in this this editorializing everything, and and that doesn't work for engineering. The thing that the the steps that I'm taking, so back <laughs> so we digress. So the the things that I'm trying to do is is a couple. First, uh, making sure that the benchmark results are based on the latest data possible. One of the good things about Pharonix is that if I have done a test on a machine that I'm maintaining, like a Red Hat or a Fedora instance or a Debian 12 instance. I can go back to that, and when, as soon as I fire off the Pharonix utility, it's going to give me a list of all the tests that have changed. Now, I need to keep a record of all of the changes that have occurred uh, since I did my last benchmark, and I assume that they're probably massive. If there is more than, as a general rule of thumb, if there's more than three months difference between the last time I ran it, I rerun it, uh, because I know there's probably been all kinds of changes. But what makes it hard is when you have uh, systems like Debian, which they'll keep the same version number, but they'll backport in changes. So you don't always know from the version. Now, there is a modifier that says, oh, well, there's a dash five or a dash six at the end. So you know it's been updated. Uh, and, and so that helps. But you don't always know what those changes are that they backported in. Uh, you just assume it's a security fix because that's what they take care of. Security fixes can make things slower, or they, if they're pulling something out, they can make something faster. An example of that is this latest uh, uh, this latest problem with Intel with the AVR 512, 256, those algorithms that, that are used for the uh, for speeding up video processing and decoding and encoding, those problems are going to slow uh, because what they're saying is if you have an Intel processor that's two generations behind, like I do, I have one that's one generation, excuse me, one that's two generation and one that's three generations behind the current. So that's going to slow those machines down. And the, apparently the hit is pretty significant. I need to be able to make sure that the versions haven't changed on the software. That includes the compilers too, by the way, because recompiling code can, with a newer compiler, could bring in new optimizers that could speed up that code from the previous release. So it could ex be the exact same uh, C program, but all of a sudden it starts performing better because the optimizations in the compiler have improved. So yeah, you have to be careful uh, just blanketing, blanketly saying, well, that didn't change, so I'm good. But then if you see a recompiled date on it, well, that could mean it did. 
uh, because it's using a new compiler to do it. So I, as a rule, three months and I, re, I retest. Now, there's some exceptions to that. And those exceptions are if I know that an update has come through that's pretty major, that's changed a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure I retest it. I want to publish those results for you to look at on Open Benchmark so you can see. You can look at them. And if you have questions about them, you're free to always ask me. There's always room for error, no matter what you do, because you're juggling a lot of different things. You're juggling, juggling the, the distros. You're, you're making sure that each distro has a fair shot at the performance, uh, being at the performance measurement. You don't want to exclude. Uh, you don't want to avoid doing a retest uh, just because you think it's okay. You might want to just go ahead and spend the time to do it. My tests take anywhere from four to six hours to run per machine. Uh, it just depends on what distribution it is. So, yeah, it, it, four to six hours is what each one of those take. So that's why you'll never see me out first <laughs> with a review. With that, first of all, I applaud what Linus Tech Tips is doing. I think that's awesome. I, uh, I think that's the right call. Uh, they're not doing the blame game. At least we're not seeing a blame game that's going on, and maybe there is internally. But sometimes critics outside of the company can be harsh, but they may not be your harshest critics. The harshest critics are usually ones inside of your own uh, company because they know, I and mean, I'm sure that there's people running around line as tactics that know that they've had problems for a long time and have probably been screaming about it for a long time. And People tend to have a tendency to do this until there's public embarrassment, and then they go, "Oh, we got to fix this." So, yeah, for my ben my point of view on on my channel is, uh, I'm not trying to spread drama about Linus Tech Tips. I think I think you know they are a very reputable source. They I've seen them make huge mistakes on camera, and they and they admit they admit it. You know they they'll they'll like when that time where uh, Linus dropped the uh, uh, that real expensive monitor <laughs> that was pretty funny, uh, and then they had to get they had to go back to the uh, company that that allowed them to have that, and then say, "Oop, we dropped it. Can you send us a new one?" Hopefully, what you'll see here is my I have a laid out process that I follow. I have documented this several times. With that, I'm done babbling. Uh, I I uh, I took this to heart and. Uh, and I took it as a call, for, a wake-up call a, for all of us that are doing measurements and are looking at performance uh, to try to help us uh, learn from their mistakes so that we don't fall into the same, the same crater that they did. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Uh, and I hope to see you again real soon. Bye for now.